Go to David McDowell, John Layfield, and Melissa Armo on all of this. Melissa, any with you begin with you. What do you look for late Sunday night when you're looking at Asia or you're looking at how our futures are trading? What, what do you pick apart and want to discern for maybe signs of stability or norm returning, whatever that is? I actually only focus on where the market's gapping. So that's pre-market or post-market activity. So Sunday night, really, you just have the futures. In the morning, when you get up in the morning Monday, it would be really interesting to see where we gap. I know we rallied into the close on Friday, but I think we were weak. We were weak all last week, and that's what made people panic. It was the first bearish week you could really say we've had in 14 and a half months since Trump was elected. I think we could still be lower. I think we have to gap up huge on Monday morning in order to recover from this immediately, which we might, but I don't think that we will. We'll have to see. So I look at the gap. The, po how, how the gap between what, though? The gap between the close of 4 o'clock, where we close, okay. and the open on Monday morning. Where okay. are we going to open? Where's Are institutions going to come in in the pre-market and buy, or are they going to dump? more shares that's and have more selling. You know, Dagan, that's the one thing you always look for every time there's a downdraft. Who's buying? We told you about Mark Cuban buying, you know, an index. We told you about some of the big names, though, have not yet come forward. They might in the days ahead, like they did in 87, Peter Lynch buying stocks in a downdraft. IBM, then GE buying their own shares back in the middle of that, of that slide. We've seen precious little of that so far. It could be going on, but they would usually announce it, but what do you make of that? I, I think that uh, Tracy mentioned this, where is the money going when it goes out of stocks? Well, money gets destroyed. It doesn't have to go anywhere. That's an excellent point. <laughs> that, yeah. So, it, but what I am most concerned about is we are facing, you mentioned interest rates. We had an unprecedented era of cheap and easy money, not just in the United States from the Federal Reserve, Everywhere. but around the globe. And we don't really know how this ends. We don't really know how high interest rates can go in the short run. So I think that you're, this, you know who didn't benefit from all that cheap and easy money? Actually, regular folks. They're finally seeing their wages grow at almost 3%. Tax reform, a big part of that. I'm not worried about them as much as I'm worried about a collapse in the stock market, maybe 20%, a collapse in junk bonds. Bitcoin, obviously a bubble there. So I think that you're beginning to see just in the start of an unwind in all of this free money. And you know what? It's never free. And the repercussions, no, you're quite right about that. John Layfield, one of the things that has been said of this market is it doesn't know what it doesn't know. And it doesn't know how far interest rates could back up. Nor does it appreciate that you don't have to back up to levels like maybe you and I can remember in the late 80s or 90s <laughs> to get people scared. That when you don't have sort of like a sense of how high is high, people sell first and ask questions later. I understand that. But are they overdoing it? Is it your sense now? Because it's been a volatile six trading days. We've, it's the fastest correction on record. But are we overdoing it? My opinion is yes, and what you don't know, I think, is the most important thing out there. You did have an exotic instrument that was on margin, as your previous guest said. This, these instruments should not be on margin. It blew up and a bunch of margin calls, but it calls what you don't know out there to, to really come to the forefront, and you had a lot of program selling that was going on. People were just taking off risk because they didn't know what was going to happen next. And simply this week, you had more sellers than buyers. It was a very yeah. simple market dynamic that was going on. Nothing fundamentally has changed in the global economy. Economy. They have global synchronized growth for the first time in many years. You still have a low unemployment in the United States. You have a low unemployment in the Eurozone, the 10 year low going on over there, and global growth. We do have some inflation coming up. It doesn't look like it's going to be six to 18 months out before it manifests itself, if it does, but that's nothing new. Nothing has changed. We just have right now, I think, selling going on because people don't know what well, they don't know. It's not the inflation. Inflation, as John said, isn't that much of a worry, but it's a mistake and fears of inflation where you have policymakers at central banks like the Federal Reserve, new chief Jay, Jay Powell just taking the job last week. You have investors overreacting and starting to dump longer term treasuries. That's your real fear. It's not the actual inflation, but somebody who makes a mistake in the face and of it. Always and you know what? Revolving credit is at a record high. That is credit card debt in this country. It's north of a trillion dollars. I caution people about adding additional credit if you think rates are going to go significantly higher. By the way, the 10-year yield in 81, it was about 15 percent. Remember right. that? Paul Volcker trying to kill do. inflation? I do. And then after 87, I know it got as high as 10 percent the last high. So, Melissa, very, very quickly, what are you telling clients to do right now? I would 
would say wait and hold. If you're a long-term investor, all signs are still green for the market. We're still very, very bullish. Tax okay. reform has just started. I think that corporate earnings this year are going to really turn out to be great. And as far as interest rates go, I mean, I used to do t t uh, mortgages 10 years ago. We were giving rates at 6%. People were loving 6%. Well, now that's what you get used to. We're more than a quarter. Home prices people... were cheaper. That's the point. The higher rates go, well, the cheaper the home prices need to be to make that make sense for people. All right, guys, thank you very, very much. Meanwhile, adding to this angst, this additional $400 billion in spending as part of that two-year budget accord that Republicans and Democrats agreed on.